What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Fins Up Network. It's been a couple of days. I know I took a little bit of break there with Memorial Day weekend, but that's okay because uh, well, there hasn't been as much Dolphins news lately. I am recording this on Sunday, so if something happens in between then, this is going to look weird when it comes out on Monday. However, with there hasn't been as much news, took a couple of days, but that's all right, because today we are going to preview the top things to watch for when the Miami Dolphins hit minicamp, which is June 1st and 2nd, so coming up real soon here. But before we do that, if you haven't already, make sure that you're subscribing, because we're going to be doing a giveaway as soon as we hit 1,000 subscribers, and we're getting really damn close right now, and I, I've told you this a couple of times, so it's going to be the giveaway, and I finally zoned in on what that giveaway is going to be. And, tr and trust me, you're not going to want to miss out on this. I'm I'm thinking about ordering a couple extra of what I'm going to be giving away because I just I don't want to just give one to someone else and not have one for myself. That's how much I want this giveaway personally. So make sure that you are subscribing so you can stay in on that as well. But let's jump into what we've got going on today because, like I said, mini camp June 1st, 2nd, then OTAs continue June 6th, 7th, 9th, and 10th. The top thing I want to pay attention to during minicamp, offensive line alignment. So the media was not allowed to report on who was lining up where during OTAs. And I do not have 100% confirmation if they'll be able to do that during this minicamp or not. However, if they do, I want to know what the different configurations are looking like that the Dolphins have been using on the offensive line. Because it's still my belief that if I had to make a call today, if there's no injuries, if there's no adding of a guy like J.C. Treader, we're looking at left tackle Teron Armstead, left guard Connor Williams, center Mike, Michael Dieter, right guard Robert Hunt, right tackle the winner between that Austin Jackson, Liam Eichenberg training camp competition. But we know a few things so far. We know Connor Williams is getting some reps at center during mini camp, and Mike McDaniel has made it no secret. They're gonna they're gonna try this out. It might even leak into to preseason a little bit to get some actual game and um, to game experience and see what it looks like on tape. We know that there's cross training going on with both Austin Jackson and Liam Eichenberg. We know Michael Dieter has played both center and guard in the NFL. We know Austin Jackson has played both guard and tackle. We know Robert Hunt has played both guard and tackle. The only thing we really know with 100% certainty right now is that if healthy. Teron Armstead is your team starting left tackle. Other than that, we can make assumptions. We can make these best guesses, but there's a lot up in the air regarding this team's experiments with offensive line alignments moving forward here. So seeing the reports of what these combinations are, what's working well, what's not working well, will be a top thing to keep an eye on in minicamp. Let's go on to the next thing. It's Tua. It's how it's the new scheme. It's the connection with Tyreek. This is what everyone wants to see. It's what's that new scheme look like? Does Tua look good in the new scheme? Does he look comfortable in it? And how is the connection with the shiny new toy? It's Christmas every day we get a Tua and uh, Tyreek report here. So what does that connection look like? Now, while the reports and the play-by-plays that we get are great, they're fun to hear about, it's really all we got. We all want football so bad, and we just get these play-by-plays. I do have two pieces of advice while we dissect each and every one of these plays. Number one, let's not overhype every single completion. And number two, let's not freak out if, God forbid, Tua throws an interception here and there. There was a stretch of practices last year when Tua was hooking up with Jakeem Grant, with Albert William Wilson, which seemed to be a deep touchdown every single day in practice. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but do you remember a lot of that happening in the regular season? I don't. On the other hand, remember in last year's mini camp, during the monsoon when the coaching staff had the offense test the limits on throws, what can they get away with? And it went terribly. Two or through five interceptions without Xavier Howard even on the field. So we can't overreact to this. Yes, we want Tua to look good. Yes, we want Tyreek making these explosive plays especially in these practices where it's not even close to the level of competition that we're going to see on regular season Sundays. But more than anything, we should hope to see the scheme working to the point where receivers are getting open on the regular, where the wide receivers are catching passes with room to create after the catch, where Tua is making the right decision, sort of as the team's blackjack dealer. I've used that analogy with Tua for a long time now, but 
getting him in the shotgun, letting him examine the field, letting him get the ball out quick to the guy who can make the play after the catch. Basically, you just want to avoid too many hiccups, the extended stretches of poor performance. We don't want that. Make your mistakes, correct them, iron them out now during these mini camps, during OTAs, during training camp, during preseason. Because remember, the first four weeks of the season, just brutal. It's New England, it's Baltimore, it's Buffalo, it's Cincinnati. That's three playoff teams from last year. That's two divisional games. And that's last year's uh, representative in the Super Bowl in the Bengals. Oh, and not to mention it's the Ravens, who the team historically has sucked against. I'm sorry to put it that way, but outside of last year's games, I can't really remember a game where the Dolphins looked that good against the Ravens. So we definitely want to see Tua in the new scheme, the connection with Tyreek. But finally, what's the rotation at linebacker going to look like for the Dolphins? My guess still is that Elandon Roberts is penciled in as that starting linebacker alongside Jerome Baker. But if Channing Tindall flashes during these practices and throughout the offseason, we could see that snap count rise kind of at a quick level, especially even early in the season. We could also see, even as early as this week's minicamp, how much the coaching staff wants to see him early in the season. If he's on the field here with the ones at all, they're basically telling him that, hey, there's an opportunity for you to take and seize to get sizable workload in year one, already early in year one. And my belief remains that it is Elandon Roberts getting the nod early in the season. Tyndall's going to get that work in sub packages in specific situations throughout the game. But if he flashes and if he plays consistently enough to the point where it just doesn't make sense to take him off the field, Elandon Roberts isn't the type of player on a one-year deal that's going to stand in the way of Channing Tyndall getting um, – extra run there. And one thing I will add, there's going to be stuff from Tyndall that isn't necessarily reported back to us. It's the inside stuff. It's how's he doing with film work? How's he doing with the play room, the, the playbook? It's the classroom type of stuff. But if he can make this college to pro transition relatively smoothly, his athleticism paired with Jerome Baker, I know a couple of the people that have commented on Tyndall in the past, you want to see that duo. You want to see that pairing, just athleticism at the position That's going to be something to watch. But that is what I have got for this little uh, mini camp preview here. But what I want to hear is your top things. What are you keeping an eye on here this this first week of mini camp for the Miami Dolphins? And like I said, if you haven't done so already, make sure you are subscribing. But until then, Miami Dolphins fans, fins 